ஒருவேட்ட <laughs> 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 ஏன்ஸ்டன்ட் <laughs> initial volume a to l na final volume da l becomes to l l become a by 2 a by 3 a square n square all the square value அதுல ரெக்கார்ட் பேசு ஐபோன் 
Those are only nine. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So the next chapter that we are going to discuss is current benefits. So as the need there is to see current has something to do with charges with the flowing, and electricity has something to do with charges. So, if you basically observe in the previous chapter, we did with electro statics in the sense electro refers to charge and static refers to stress. So, we were dealing with the charges with the rest. So, here we are going to deal with the same charges, but now they are not going to be interested in motion. So, the charges which are in motion. Together, they fall under the branch of physics called as electrodynamics. First, electro charge dynamics is motion. So, current electricity falls under the branch of physics called as electrodynamics. So, to understand this chapter, there are certain basic terminologies that we need to. So, these terminologies already in this way and tell them. And after that, we will discuss something which is relevant to your understanding. And uh, there will be no slightly in depth of what you have learned in your presentation. Okay. So, here the topic we are going to see is the basic terminologies which are used in this chapter. So if you see the first terminology that we are going to speak about is current. When I say current, I am talking about electric current. So what is electric current? So it is defined as the rate of flow of charges. It is defined as the rate of flow of right. And the symbol used for electric current is I. Then this I is written as Q divided by T. Right. So when you try to talk about this current, it is basically divided into two types. One is called as average current, and the second is called as instantaneous current. So when I talk about the average current, average current is defined as delta Q divided by delta T. Means you will know what the initial charge is. You know what the minimum charge is. You will subtract them and divide it. Whereas for instantaneous value, the same current is given as DQ divided by D. Let me put it as DQ divided by D. Right. Now, if you observe it for this current, the SI unit is going to be Coulomb per second. This Coulomb per second is collectively called as ampere, which is represented by the symbol capital H. So, ampere represented by capital H. 
So whether it is going to be average value of current or integrated by the current, it is measured to be in terms of ambient. That is the first point to be noted. And the second important point that is to be noted is when I talk about average, it is calculated for the change that is taking place between the sun, between two instances. So when it is taking place between two instances, whereas instantaneous current is calculated when it is taking place at an instant. Are you clear with this? Right? So these two are important points that you need to be able to. Uh, just a question. So, do you guys have demos in this extra like potential therapy? I have some important work in going on that I'll be back. I will be explaining by demos. Please make a note. Those are online. I'll be back in 10 minutes. Well. Okay, the class will go on till 7 15.
So those who are online are able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, so we'll get started again. I hope it is clear this point. So, in the basic terminology, the first thing that we saw was heretic in this table. So, the second important term that we are supposed to know is. The second important term that we are supposed to know is potential difference. So potential difference is represented by the symbol V. Right. So this you already know. From the previous chapter, we know that potential is the amount of work that we need to move charge from infinity to some point within the electrostatic. That is the potential difference. Here I'm talking about potential difference. So just for you to understand, right? So everybody knows what this is. Right. If you see, you go to a top and buy this library. You guys do this. Have you ever bought it? Right. From where? Like what kind of you can either get it from an electrical shop or a supermarket. Why do you do this? Supermarket, right? So when you go to the supermarket, what is the land you should stop? What I think, how do you say that this is what it is? Do you use a double or a double? Right? That's what is what it is. So, you see this is a So, when I talk about this, let's say that there are some specifications given in the book. Can you tell me what the potential is given? Next time, you, you all can take it. So, what is the value given? One point. So, I think that we are going to be able to do this. When you connect it, of course, it is very easy to do this. You are going to be able to do this. When you connect one like this, and the other one will be connected to this. Because actually, how are you connecting? So, in terms of mathematical representation, mathematical case, they appear to be parallel to each other, but actually, they are connected. See, when you do that, right, 1.5 volts, it really adds to another 1.5 volts. And it's actually working like 3 volt back. But to put it simple, right, they're actually using the same volume. So, they're using the same volume potential difference. Okay. Now, I use the word potential difference here. Right? What is the meaning of this? You know that the battery has a positive terminal and negative. So, this positive terminal has potential associated. Negative terminal also has a potential associated. So, the difference in the potential of the positive and the negative terminal is what is called as potential. Right. So, potential difference is still going to take the same definition. It is the amount of work done per unit charge. So, this definition you already know from your 10th grade. But are you able to understand the perfect work? What is the difference between? Because you have got potential, and now we talk about the potential. So, potential is defined at a point. Potential difference is defined between the points. So, here it is defined between the points. And this is the Thing that is needed, this is the parameter that is needed is the charges and motion. So then you are able to generate something called an electrical. So this term is very, very important for this question. I hope you are able to understand. So potential difference is the amount of work done per unit. 
So what is going to be the unit for it? Work is defined in joule. This is defined in coulomb. Joule per coulomb is going to give us volt, which is represented with the symbol capital B. That's it. Are you? It goes wrong and are you able to understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So potential difference is defined in terms of gold. Now, here comes an important question. Right. So when you talk about when you talk about current L, so when you talk about current electricity, right, what heavy is from here? When you talk about Current, you speak about the charges which are going to the conductors. So, when you talk about conductors, they are basically metals. Right? So, when you talk about metals, what do they have inside? They have three electrons present. What do you mean by these three electrons? Which are? These are the electrons that are able to participate in the conduction. These that they are able to move within the conduction. Right. So, what did they say? You have conductors, and conductors are basically metals. And those metals have three electrons. So, what you are going to do is let's say you are going to a shop and buy a bike. Let's buy an electrical wire which is made up of bond. So, generally, what shape do the wires take? They take the shape of a cylinder. So, inside the cylinder, according to the concept that we saw now, there should definitely be three electrons. Right? So, there are going to be three electrons present. I mean, here, let's say there are n number of electrons. Now, each of these electrons, what do we assume? Generally, when you buy something from the shop and come, you have a conductor shop, say where the three electrons are present. So, how do you think these electrons will be oriented? Where will they be positioned? Where will they be? So, the thing is, these electrons, so they will sit on the surface only under the electrostatic. It will not electrostatic. Right? So, here what it happens is, these three electrons will have a random motion. What do you think? Do you think that these charges are going to be like this? Inside, they will be in random motion where they have some velocity associated. But obviously, when I say random motion, the directions are going to be different. Now comes an important question. The reading I told you. Flow of charges means electric current. And now I tell you, when you buy a conductor, you do nothing or see that I'm going to charge the electric current. Here is what I'm going to say. Here is what I'm going to say. 
No. So those who are online, am I clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now we'll proceed. So I'm going to show you a derivation. Always, I'm not giving you, not giving you what the topic is. After we complete, we'll see what the main topic is. So let's take this conductor. Let's take a conductor. We know that due to thermal agitation means due to the temperature factor, the electrons present inside, even before you connected any external source, are going to be random. Right? So 
the electrons u1 u2 u3 un everything is going to be aligned in random direction right now what was the first step that we saw u1 vector plus u2 vector plus so on till u n vector the whole divided by n is going to be a null vector okay now i am not interested in random motion what i need is i understood that current can be passed in different direction means there is an array motion in a particular direction so to make the random motion into an array what will i do obviously i will connect it across a potential source i'll take this conductor and connect it to a battery when i do that battery has a positive terminal and a negative so what will the battery do it will start generating electric from where to where from higher to lower pitch but we know that when a negatively charged particle is present the electric is electric start to be force which direction in the opposite so there is going to be a force experienced by the electron in the opposite direction so what is the value of this force it is going to be the charge multiplied with the electric field small e cap going to be the electric force that is experienced i took only the magnitude because the direction is already given but this e into e is what is equal to transverse force is equal to the mass into acceleration according to newton so what is going to be the acceleration here e into capital e divided by m the meaning of this. each electron here i want you to make a note of this point initially each electron was having different initial velocities it is write it as u plus u plus i would say u plus u plus so on to even so each particle has a different velocity but when it comes to the acceleration observe the charge of the electron is same for all electric field that is getting generated here is c and mass is c so the whole parameter is going to be a constant means each electron is going to accelerate at the same rate that's an important point to be now with this knowledge what i am going to do is right with this knowledge what i will do is see If I write it in scalar form, I can write it as e into capital E divided by n. If I write it in vector form, I'll write it as minus e into e vector divided by n. The negative sign indicates that the acceleration in the electric field is in opposite directions. Right? I'll be using either or, depending on the situation. Now my interest is the electron which had an initial velocity of u one for it to get accelerated. In when I say acceleration, the velocity change. So for the velocity to change and the particle to come to this acceleration, can I say take some time? It cannot happen at the same instant. Can you define two velocities at the same instant? Obviously not. So for the change to take place, we need to give some time. So based on these parameters, I will write the equations of motion. I'll write one of the equations of motion for. All the electron atoms. The equation that I am going to use is E is equal to U plus K. Any questions? I have V one is equal to U one plus plus K one into P one. Why did I write one? That's the reason. Similarly. First, we'll uh, substitute the value. Only thing is, I need to write it in the vector because we are dealing with vectors. So, p one vector is equal to u one vector plus what is going to be the acceleration? Minus e into e vector divided by m into p one. That is going to be the final velocity of the first element. 
Similarly, what is going to be the final velocity of the second electron? U2 vector plus negative of E into E vector divided by M into E. So, let us if I keep on writing, then what will happen here? T N vector will be equal to U N vector plus minus E into E vector divided by M into T N. My interest is to find the trace between final velocities, initial velocities, and time. For the quarter, I will add volume equation. When I add, what am I going to get on the left hand side? I will get V1 vector plus V2 vector plus V3 vector plus so on till Vn vector is going to be equal to constant u1 vector plus u2 vector plus so on till u n vector plus minus e into capital E divided by m into t1 plus t2 plus so on till tn. Make sense? All that I did is added. But when I look at the expression that I have with respect to initial velocity, the average, the average of the vector sum of all the initial velocities See, so here I cannot write u1 vector plus u2 vector plus so on with u1 vector as this. I should write the average of the time. For that, what I do is convert them that you are supposed to write this. You need to write the same thing and divide it with. So you divide it with n here. And you write another n So, what are the parameters that get eliminated? This is completely locked. So, what you have on the left hand side is average of all the final velocities. Right. The average of all these final velocities is given a symbol called as dd with a vector symbol on top of it, which we call it as this. Velocity. It's called as drift velocity. This is equal to minus e, e vector divided by m, the whole multiplied with the average of all the time, which is given a symbol called tau, which has the name called as relaxation time. So, as the name suggests, Relaxation time is the time the electrons have to relax between what? So the time it has to relax between two structures in the situation. So what is the meaning of that? If I have one, let's say there is a wall, you have a wall which is pointed against it. So the wall goes and hits the wall, that is first collision. Comes back and it stays going again and again. That is the second collision. So there is a time that is existing between. That time is what we call it as relaxation. So basically, relaxation time is the time that is existing between two successive positions. I mean, here this. Right. So this thing consolidated and written as V D vector is equal to minus E into E vector divided by M. So, and this is going to be the mathematical equation that we need to know with respect to relaxation time and how it is related to the right. Right. Yeah. One question that I have is we saw the mathematical part. The next thing is we need to understand how to define. So, which mathematical expression was given an important sequence? The array of all the final velocities is what important the sequence. So, what is the The average of all the final velocities is by the But when is this average again? It is because of it is because of the electric system. Right, there is a cost. There is an output 
and there is a path which is middle with So what is the output principle of it? It is the path of electricity. So we need to combine those two things to give it. So the average of all the final velocities attained by electron in the presence of energy. Right. So it is defined as average of final velocities of electrons inside a conductor under under the influence of electric field. So, I don't escape. Right? So, it's simple only. All that you can expect is maybe a two mark. Right? For this also. So, the name of the topic is.
Now see, actually if you observe the whole sequence of events, right, you had a conductor. When you connected a potential source, when you connected a potential source, what happened? There was electric field represented and due to this electric field, what was achieved? The electrons could achieve drift loss. Right? So, can I say this E is the effect? Sorry, this E is the cause for the effect leading. Means the drift velocity is getting created because there is an effect. Sorry, potential source. So, this is the potential source. Right. So what I'm trying to say is the drift velocity is getting created because of the electric. So this is the output for the given. Meaning, if I may define a ratio of the drift velocity that is getting generated for unit electric field that we have applied. Here is to take the ratio of the drift velocity to the unit electric field. This is given a name called as mobility. So mobility basically tells us the extent to which the electrons are able to move within a conductor. So if you observe, it is basically the ratio of the output to the input. Right? If you see, drift velocity is a vector point. Electric current is also a vector point. But there is no constant of Vector divided by it cannot happen. So, this mobility is going to be scalar. It's a scalar vector. And the next thing is, if you look at the unit, here it is going to be meter per second divided by. How can you define the electric field unit as? You can define it as volt per meter. The reason why I am describing in terms of volt per meter here. We are currently a potential source. So for a potential source, it is defined in volt and meter, obviously, will be in the distance. So I will take Newton's argument because we never defined it in the other force. So this meter goes to numerator, which becomes meter square divided by volt length. So this is going to be the unit power mobility. So we need to answer what is mobility it is basically the ratio of the drift velocity to the electric. I hope you are clear with the significant as. What is significant? What does mobility tell us? The extent to which the electrons are actually able to move in the presence of the electricity, within the conductor, in the presence of the electricity. Mm -hmm.
So there are two important derivations that we saw. What are these? So not important derivations, two important terms. The first derivation is also understanding what is the question we need to know the theory of how come into picture. Okay. Then from crystal velocity, if you observe basically what it is, crystal velocity is not electric materials. So can I have mobility written like this also? We know that BD is equal to E into capital E divided by M into tau. If I ignore the minus sign, so minus sign says that the crystal velocity and electric field are in opposite direction. So if I take only the magnitude, I'll bring this E to the left hand side. So what will happen? It will be BD divided by E is equal to E divided by M into tau. So mobility can mathematically be written like this. So now they give you a problem and ask you to calculate the mobility. All that you need to do is what is the relaxation? Because you know this half of the energy, you know the mass of the energy. There are six times. Only thing you need to know the relaxation time. Okay. Even this way, I would like to discuss on one point. This expression is there of this BD is equal to E to capital B to the same point. From this, the next step that we need to know is how this potential is. For, for, for the matter, we need to write the physical velocity in terms of current. We need to understand how the physical velocity is going to exist. Current is the main object for the charge, the name of the current. And the second thing that I need to know is. Since electric is a parameter that is related to potential, how can you relate potential to the time? Based on this, we will be relating an important point. What was it? You would have studied that is equal to IR, but here you will see how it is like. That's what we are going to do. So, that is why this expression is the most important. Okay. So, the next two derivations will take at least 20 minutes, 50 minutes. So that I will start in the next slide. So I want you all to revise this derivation. But here, this is go zero. And the remaining part I start. If you go to a very small chapter, maximum by next to the state. Start with the day. First, uh, important topics like uh, you don't have uh, this in meter relation. Those two are the factors. But apart from the individual, the extension of the thing. Okay. So, that, any doubt, please? Clear? So, those are all in any doubt? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. We will wind up. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.